फर्स्ट वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टाइप्स ऑफ नंबर स्क्वेयर वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट स्टार्टेड विथ काउंटिंग नंबर आर नेचुरल नंबर विच विल बी वन टू थ्री फोर देन वी डिस्कस्ड होल नंबर दट मीन्स दैट टू गेम द कंप्लीटनेस विदउट जीरो वील नॉट गेट इट कंप्लीटेड सो वंस यू एड टू द काउंटिंग नंबर दट इज जीरो प्लस नेचुरल नंबर विल बी होल नंबर सो इफ आई राइट इट दिस इज होल नंबर विथ इन विच बेसिकली दिस इज natural number right so zero will be added extra right then you know other type of number that we have discussed was integers that is basically again the the completeness but it will also have negative numbers so it is further more it will have negative numbers also okay these are the type of numbers we have discussed then we have also discussed about operation with respect to odd and even right with respect to addition if there are two evens you will get even If there are two odds, whether you subtract or addition, that is different. Still, you will get the even number. But if it is one odd, one even, you always get a odd number. So that is we are discussed with respect to subtraction and addition. With respect to multiplication, what we decided, even if there is one even number, irrespective whether is another is even or odd, we will get the even number. If you want to get a odd number, then both has to be odd. Then we also discussed about powers. That is. All the powers of even number will always be even. All the powers of odd number will always be odd, right? So that means that three, three square is nine, three cube is twenty-seven, three to the power of four is eighty-one, three to the power of five is two forty-three, right? Three to the power of six is seven twenty-nine. Like that, you know. If you start looking at all the three powers, will be odd. Why it is? Because powers are nothing but you are multiplying the same number many a times, right? So if it is three cube, what you are doing? You are writing three three times, right? Now you know that two odds will give you odd. Again, you are multiplying that odd with another odd. Again, it will that you know cycle continues, right? That is why the odd powers will always be odd. Even powers will always be even. Even powers, what happens? Two two two. Let's say three times. First time two even you will multiply. You get the answer as even. Again with that even you will multiply one more even. That is that cycle goes on. So even powers will be even. Odd powers will be odd. Then, with respect to powers, with respect to positive and negative, we have discussed. That is, you know, if any number, right, one or minus one, let's say, if I am having the powers to it, if it is odd power, right, if it is a positive number, it does not matter whether you are having a odd power or even power. Number will always be positive. But if it is a negative number, then what will happen? If there are two E one power one minus one square will become minus one into minus one. Since minus into minus is plus, you will get plus. So E one powers of negative numbers will give you positive number. Odd powers of negative numbers will give you negative number. This is the basic we have covered. These are the properties that you should know. Once you are reading, you should know. Right. Then along with that, we also discussed about what are the factors. Right. What is prime number? Prime number will have only Two factors, composite number will have more than two factors, right? Either one is neither prime nor composite because it is having only one factor. And prime number, the least prime number is two, and which is the only even prime number. So whenever the question prime number will be given to you, you always have to keep in that there is one two which is basically even prime number, right? So that is how you will talk, right? And whenever the questions will be given, how you are going to attend it? You know, if it is an integer, one thing you will put integer and try to check it. Another fraction, and if you again will try to satisfy the condition. If it is satisfying by both integer as well as fraction, for example, then you say that you cannot come to conclusion. Okay, that is how you are supposed to think. Any question, as long as it is sufficient or not sufficient, you will think in that way. Right. So once you are doing it alone, second statement alone, then you club the information. While doing the second statement in the beginning, you will not club the information given in the. statement 1 you will forget the statement 1 do the read the statement 2 separately and then you know you try to solve it if it is not working then only you can combine the information that has been given okay that is what we have done with the data sufficiency also with respect to composite number it can be even also it can be odd also right and also we discussed about factors regular composite numbers uh, other numbers will be you know regular it will have Even number of factor, unless it is a square number. Square number will always have a odd number of factor. We had seen for 
for example 4 is 2 square we will have 1 2 and 4 so there are only three factors for 9 we will have 1 3 and 9 okay 1 and 9 3 into 3 so there are three factors now 16 you will have 1 2 4 8 and 16 there are five factors so there are always odd number of factors in a square number right now we will have another i'll write just write you know 25 1 5 25 right another is 36 1 2 3 4 6 then 4 correspondence 9 3 correspondence 12 2 correspondence 18 and 1 correspond will be 36 right so what we have discussed factors will be half of the factor will be less than square root of a number half of the factor will be more than square root of a number these things so that is the reason whenever you are checking for a prime number or not what we will do we will take the square root of number under and only check with the prime factors okay all the prime numbers below that you will check with if it is coming then it is a prime number if it is not working then it is not a prime number right so that is how we will also find out the prime number that we have discussed yesterday right but if you look at a pattern here right how many factors are there for 36 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 total 9 factors now here it is 3 factors 3 factors 3 factors and 5 factors so what is the pattern here if i look at one it is odd number second all the you know square numbers of a prime number this is nothing but 2 square this is 3 square this is 5 square right these are three prime numbers all the squares of the prime number will always have only three factors that number right one that number itself and the prime number as one only three factor will be there so though there are odd factors if the question is given why you should know this basically let's say if he has given you know the answer as a square he has given it as seven factors then you should know that answer is not a prime number as well as it should be a square number because odd number of factors will be there for square number that is one second if it was a prime square then it would have had only three factors so that is why you can see two square three seven square if you look at one seven forty nine that is three right so if you are having eleven one twenty one then one eleven one twenty one right so there are only three factors whoever whatever the square number of a prime number will have exactly three factors other square numbers will have odd number of factors remaining non square numbers and composite number will always have the even number of the factor and half of the factor will be less than square root of a number half of the numbers factors will be more than square foot of a number right clear okay see cds question taken this question is you can see that upsc asking similar question in all the government exams that is being conducted by them so it is going to continue question is is it odd or even also see the statement two. the options are like this option i have not shown it option is either statement one alone is sufficient or you know both statement alone can be sufficient that is one more option that has been given question is is p square plus q square plus q is odd your answer should be either s or it should be no okay okay now read the first statement what is the first statement 2p plus q is odd now when two addition will be odd one has to be even one has to be odd now 2p is multiple of 2 if it is multiple of 2 irrespective of whether p is odd number or even number 2p will be even so this will be even then how some will become odd that means that q should be odd this you have got the information because of this right okay now will be the first statement now you don't know the p right so now what happens let's say p can be either odd or it can be even both option are there try to think from both the perspective still if you are getting the same answer then you are getting it from the statement one that's it right so first i will think as p as odd then what will happen odd square will be odd plus again odd square will be because q already odd you have got it because of the equation since 2p is even q has to be odd 
because this sum they are saying that this sum is odd. That means that Q must be odd. That you have come to conclusion. But P you are not sure whether it is odd or it can be even. Now first I will think it as odd. Then I will check. P square will be odd. Q since it is Q is already odd number. Q square will be odd. Since already we know that Q is odd, I will put it as odd. Now odd plus odd plus odd. Right. Odd plus odd is odd. Odd plus odd is even. Sorry. Even plus odd is odd. So I can say that this is odd. Now I have to put P as even number and then I have to check whether still I am getting the same answer. Right. Now I will put P square as P as even number. When P is even sum, what will happen with P square? Even. Now Q already I have got the answer. Q is already odd number. So odd square will be again odd. Plus Q is anyway odd. Odd plus odd is odd. Odd plus even is. So odd plus odd is even. Even plus even is even. So I am getting odd also even also. Right. In one case I am getting odd. In another case I am getting even. So can you tell whether P square plus Q square plus Q is odd? It depends on the value of P now. If P is odd, then the answer will be odd. If P is even, then the answer will be even. So if you are getting two answers, then that means that you are not able to answer. If you are not able to answer or conclude, then you are saying the statement 1 is not sufficient. Now forget about the statement 1. Go to the statement 2. Okay. Again, what is the statement 2? Q minus 2P is odd. Again, what is the thing that you are getting? 2P will be 2P will be right. Anyways, it is even because it is multiple of 2. Whenever it is multiple of 2, whether P is odd number or even number, the multiplication 2P will always be even. So, the remaining is Q. Right. Q minus even should I should get odd. That means that whether Q should be even or odd. Odd. Because even minus even will always be even number 4 minus 2 if you are not getting it in the exam let's say think about two numbers and come to conclusion right 4 minus 2 even minus even even right similarly 4 minus 3 even minus odd and then you will get one odd right so similarly here since one is even to get the answer as odd other should be odd that means that again here what i am getting q is odd. am i getting anything about p here no P can be even or P can be odd. Same thing will happen again. Right? P can be even, P can be odd. If P can be even or odd, if it is even, then I am getting the answer as even. If I am putting P as odd, I am getting the answer as odd. So I am not able to come to conclusion. Even if you combine the state, both the information, still it will be same. Right? Because you, in both the information, even if you combine, you know that Q is odd. P you don't know because 2P is even we know but whether P is even or P is odd you cannot come to conclusion right because P can be either way now 2 into 1 is also even 2 into 2 is also even right P can be 1 also P can be 2 also because 2P is anyways even right since it is a multiple of 2 it will be even right so this is the basic thing both sides are not sufficient correct so here you have to think in that way. You have to put across one easily. 2P plus Q is odd. Apply the basic rule. If it wants to be odd, 2P is always even because it is multiple of 2. That is a even number. Q has to be odd because they are selling that P plus 2P plus Q is odd. It is possible only when Q is odd. Now you got the Q but you have not got the P. P can be either odd or even. Check with the both the cases. That's it. So if you are getting the answer in both the cases, let's say you are getting the answer same then you are able to answer. Different answer you are getting in both the cases, that means that you are not able to answer. It depends upon the circumstances. Clear? What is this question is asking about? Whether xy is greater than 0. That means that what is greater than 0 means positive number. Right? So greater than 0 means positive number, less than 0 means negative number. Okay. Now, you have to be in a position to tell either s or no. Okay. okay. So first, when multiplication of two number will be positive? First we will come from there, right? Greater than zero means it has to be positive, right? 
positive numbers will be greater than 0. When multiplication of two number will be positive? Either both are positive or both are negative. That means that both x and y should be positive or negative. In both the cases, you can say that the sum will be positive or greater than 0. Right? I mean, my product will be greater than or 0. Right? Okay. Now, our job is to find whether x is positive or y is positive or then trying to put the thing. Read the statement on alone here. It is x to the power of 8. Another is y to the power of 9. This multiplication is negative number. Okay? When you will get negative? One should be positive, other should be negative. Now, if you look at here, x has e1 power, power of 8, that is a e1 power. If any number, either positive number or negative number, have a e1 power, whether it will be positive or negative. Minus 1 square is always plus 1, minus 1 to the power of 4 is always plus 1. So, whenever the e1 powers are there, this number becomes positive. Now, I want to get the answer as negative. That means that other number should be negative. Then that means that y should be negative. Right. Now, you came to know that only about y as negative. x can be positive also. x can be negative also. You cannot come to a conclusion about x now. Because x to the power of 8 is there. Even if it is negative number also, it will be positive. For a positive number also, it will be positive. So, x you are not sure of. From the first statement, you are not sure of x. Now, if you look at here, why you know negative? Now, it is greater than or 0 depends on x. If x is also negative, then it will be greater than 0. If x is positive number, it will be less than 0. So, you cannot come to conclusion because you are not knowing the value of x now from the statement 1. Now, we will go to the statement 2, forgetting that statement 1. Now, statement 2 separately. Again, it has told that x to the power of 9 into y to the power of 10 is less than 0. That is, it is negative. When it can be negative? 1 positive, 1 negative. Now, since y is e1 power, it will be positive. Since it is positive, if you want multiplication as negative, then another number should be negative. That means that x is negative number. Right? x is negative. Then only this is possible. Right? Now, from the second statement, you will come to know that x will be negative. But do you know anything about y now? Because y is again, it can be either positive or negative. From the second statement alone, forget about the first statement. From the second statement alone, what you are knowing is y to the power of 10 is there. Even for a positive number, it will be positive. Even for the negative number, it will be positive. So, you are not sure about y now, whether it is a positive or not in the second statement. Forget about the first statement, right? So, again, by using only second statement, you cannot answer. Because you know the value of x as negative, but you are still not sure about y. Now, when you combine the information, what will happen? First statement says y is negative. Second statement says x is negative. That means that one you are combining now, negative into negative. Negative into negative means positive. So, I can now say that is xy greater than 0? Yes. By using both the information, I can say yes. Either alone, I cannot say. Right. So, this is how you are supposed to do. All these are very basics actually. The question looks very difficult here. Right. x to the power of 8 in y to the power of 9 less than 0. While looking at the question itself, when you have not practiced this kind of questions. In exam, when you look at the question, this is what kind of question UPSC is asking. It is above the level of, you know, basic numeracy. All 10th standards say above. Basically, that is the complaint that we are getting. But it is at the end of the day, basic operation they are trying to understand. Whether you know that those things basically. All right.